so um, in line with that notion that mm-hmm. things are entangled with one another, which is a deep interdisciplinary um, movement right now, um, there, uh, there was this uh, beautiful story t- um, told by Thich Nhat Hanh, um, who, who, who says, uh, you know, if you hold a piece of paper, if you hold up a piece of paper, what's the piece of paper made of? Um, and he says, if you look at the paper very well, it's made of moving clouds. And that's not the way we see things in the modern world. Mm. We, we've been taught to see things, to reduce it to its tiniest bit. So, um, what are, what's a table made of? It's made of wood, made of nails. Take that apart, it's made of uh, organic material. Take that apart, it's made of compounds and it's made of this until you get down to something that is an that is platonically atom atomic something that you can not divide any further so to speak, that's how that's the reductionism that is the engine of the heart at the heart of modernity but we're learning a new way there's a there's a there's an, a different kind of analysis i hesitate to even call it new but it it seems to be sweeping it's a sea change definitely we're learning to see the world differently um so instead of Stripping down things to their nitty gritty parts and stuff like that. Instead of thinking that everything is made up by some of their parts, we're learning to see that those things that are excluded are also part of the things that have been made, if you will. So hence, Thich Nhat Hanh's example. The paper is not just made up mm-hmm. of the things that is right there in front of you. It's made up of the things that it has excluded in the process of it being materialized, so to speak. So it's made up of clouds and the rain that fell on on the soil. It's made up of a farmer and the farmer's wife who who took care of the soil. It's made up of political realities. It's made up of Monsanto and its fertilizer logic. It's made up of all these realities, and these are all entangled in in that little piece of paper. Now I say this because uh, um, uh, this realization, this reckoning, this the change this transformation of our understanding of how the world works coincides with the trauma, with the crisis of bodies we're experiencing. It's not just in climate change or in how we even think about epidemics. Um, the recent one in Brazil, the Zika virus, you know, we, we tend to, again, we tend to reduce things like climate change is just carbon. If we can get rid of uh, carbon emissions, we solve the problem. And what that's, what that foregoes, what that excludes, what that yeah. occludes is the way we run our economy, the way we treat the non-human world, the rituals we do every day that makes all of us complicit in a complex, overly, stupendously complex, um, uh, you know, and sensuous movement of things and flow of things. Now, situating ourselves in that flow of things seems to be the challenge today. It's like a coming down to earth that needs to happen. Um, and I don't know how that wants to happen. And that's also promising too, not knowing what, what, what comes next. Um, let me put it this way is, is to conclude this uh, line of thought. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think wisdom, uh, you, you spoke about wisdom and wisdom needed today. I don't think wisdom can bear the, the burden of what wants to come next. I think we need stupidity as well. And that might be a very outrageous thing to say. But I feel we are all in this together and wisdom will not cut it alone. Mm-hmm. The experts will not cut it. The wise ones will not cut it. Um, the world is not um, some kind of uh, ethically biased system where the good guys win, the wise ones win. I feel the world is, is, is so preposterously gracious that even those people we will rather rule out of, or, or, you know, rule out of reckoning and say, you guys don't exactly know what's up. You're not woke. Um, you're not woke enough. Uh, they are also part of what wants yeah. to happen. It's like a compost heap of bodies, of voices and that is happening or that has always been happening. As Bruno Latour would say, you know, using his book title, we have never been modern. We've always been entangled. I think it's just beginning to become much more prominent right now. And, and, and so there, there is a loosening of boundaries. There is a, there's a, 
as an exhaustion of systems. The pillars are breaking apart and we're beginning to notice the debris field we've always been living in. How to deal with this complexity is much more than impeaching Trump. It's much more than signing a new document to make sure climate change is gotten rid of. It's much more than uh, um, creating more seminars for people to get woke. It's much more than that. We are not the sole agencies or interlocutors of change. Change is much more than us. Our thoughts are not even our own. And, and, and this is a radically expanded world that we have to deal with. That even us, even ourselves, we're not individuals. We're, we're attached with ghosts, if you will. And the things that we've named it previously, like, oh, we do things like free will and we have mm-hmm. choice. All of that has to be queered in a world that is entangled, a world that is complex, a world that is not easily defined. And so uh, that's my first um, um, comment. Not knowing what to do is actually much more productive and actually much more generative than we might think it to be. Um, I, there, it's troubling, it's uncomfortable, it's difficult, but there is some promise in acknowledging that we don't exactly know what, we, what wants to come next and holding each other in this moment. That's why I feel that Trump is not the problem. Like you have rightly said, it, uh, you, use a lang- you use medical language in saying that he's a symptom of a deeper syndrome. And, and I think I agree to a large extent that it, it's not about Trump. In fact, I, I'm just about penning a piece called Forget Trump. And I don't mean that mm-hmm. in some cavalier sense. Uh, it's called Forget Trump. Let's turn to each other. And mm-hmm. it, I don't mean that in a sense. Uh, there are definitely people that are hurt by his, um, by his, shall I call them policies? Because there's, I haven't actually noticed anything that is that seems like a strong policy or yeah, ideologically his... um, pure or ideologically coherent yeah. uh, articulation of his thoughts. I haven't noticed that so far. But there are definitely people that are hurt and are made invisible by him being there. But um, but I feel the greater, uh, the one of the most promising things we can do right now is to to maybe hack the notion of the nation state is to turn to each other and and build new communities is is to make new alliances with each other is to reconfigure the notion of the, of neighbors is to turn to the stranger and open up spaces of radical hospitality those are collective practices that we can engage in that i feel could open up you know new ideas of what it means to be indigenous what it means to be american today what it means to be a, a colonist and a settler in native land, and what it means to be native to. Everything is open-ended. Things are changing. I think I'll just shut up for now.